In our reading from Acts, we heard of the first martyrdom of a Christian, Stephen. And a, a wee side comment about the people who went to stone him, throwing their jackets at the feet of someone called Saul. He would become Paul eventually, but to begin with, he was there at the first martyrdom, holding the jackets. And why was Stephen stoned to death for proclaiming Jesus as Lord? And he was regarded as having wisdom in the spirit of being able to perform many wonders and miracles. But opposition to him arose. Those wonder and miracles that Jesus pointed to when he told the disciples that he was preparing a place for them and that they would, the people that came and believed in him would be able to do far greater things than he could. But opposition to this following of the way arose very quickly. And Stephen was a victim of that opposition. People in the local synagogue had argued with him but had got nowhere because of the Holy Spirit guiding him and filling him with wisdom. So they got people to falsely testify against Stephen, accusing him of saying that Jesus of Nazareth would destroy the temple and change the customs of Moses. And immediately before he's taken off to be stoned, He's before the Sanhedrin, the, the leading ruling group of the temple. And they ask him if the charges are true. And he doesn't say yes or no, but he explains from Abraham through Moses the journey of the people of Israel. And from there, and once they've entered the promised land, how Solomon eventually would build a temple, a house for God. Yet Stephen also points to the fact that God is not contained in any building that's made by human hands. And these people who are questioning him are still uncircumcised in their hearts and in their ears. And by him saying that, he's saying, you know, you're being the people of Israel, they would have been circumcised to adhere to the law of Moses, the Abraham, you know, that came from Abraham, that God gave to Abraham as a sign of the covenant God had with the Abraham and his descendants, that the males would be circumcised. And Stephen's more or less saying, you may be circumcised in the manner that Abraham was told by God in the manner that Moses passed on to you. But have you opened your hearts to see, to, to perceive God beyond the limitations of the temple? Have you opened your ears, meaning, you know, have you opened how you would perceive the world according to to greater than you can possibly imagine? Are you willing to be moved by the Holy Spirit to know God in a new and wonderful way, is what Stephen's saying. And he also sees that they're resisting the Holy Spirit, resisting God coming and changing them and revealing God's love in a new way to them. And he also accuses the Sanhedrin of betraying and murdering Jesus. That didn't exactly go down well. And that's the point where they, they decide they become furious, enter the rage, haul him out of the city and stone him. But as he's, they're starting to get him in the position to start stoning him, he looks up to heaven. And he sees the glory of God and Jesus at the right hand of God. And he tells them to look. He invites them to look and see what he can see. And that the Son of Man is at the right hand of God. 
There, there is blasphemy. Because someone being at the right hand of God is putting them as equal of God. And that's not acceptable. And the punishment for, bl for blasphemy is stoning. Dragged him from the city, stone him. He, even in that, even though Stephen would have known what was his ultimate, what would ultimately happen as a result of the stoning, he trusted fully in Jesus. Never took his eyes off Jesus. Asked Jesus to receive his spirit and not hold against those who stoned him their sin. Even in his death, Stephen forgave his attackers and placed his whole trust in what Jesus had explained to the apostles, that he would receive him into the glorious heavenly kingdom and there would be a place ready for Stephen and for all believers. When Jesus told his apostles this, he also spoke about if they asked for anything in his name, he would do it. Stephen may have asked to be saved in a very literal sense, saved from death by stoning. Stephen could have even asked for God's wrath to fall on those who were stoning him or bearing witness to the stoning. But he didn't. He followed Jesus' example on the cross of enduring death and seeking forgiveness for his attackers, for his executioners, of bringing to God, glory to God, trusting in God fully through Christ Jesus and all the promises that he knew in his heart. Personally, I do not know what I would have done in a similar situation or in any of the places where Christians are seriously persecuted in our world. Do you? I think if we're very honest with ourselves, we may say we would do certain things in these extreme circumstances, but unless we were actually in them, I genuinely don't think we'd know until we were faced with them. So I see Stephen's faith as both an example and a challenge to us. Are we willing to proclaim Jesus as Lord above all else, even if people will reject that message? Are we willing to place our whole lives, our whole lives, completely into Jesus' hands, trusting fully in his promises to us? Are we willing to forgive those who would harm us in any way? I suppose, ultimately, where does our faith lie? Does it lie in Jesus? as promises, or does it lie in other things of this world rather than God's kingdom? Amen.